Hey, thank you so much for joining us online today. We believe that God wants to use this message to speak directly to you. So as you listen, we want to encourage you, have an open mind and an open heart to hear what God's speaking to you. As well, you can access all the sermon notes from this message on our website and on our church app. Man, what a great day it is. We get to be in church today, everybody. Come on. It may be raining outside, but man, I'm excited about today. I've got some scripture for you and just wanna pause and, and welcome everybody. Excited that you're here. It's raining outside, but man, it feels good in here. Uh, for all our Lakeshore family who decided to stay home and just kind of take it easy on the couch, understand, we miss you. Can't wait to see you back here this Wednesday, for first Wednesday. And if it is your first time here, man, we're honored that you're here today. My name is Pastor Mitchell, one of the pastors on staff, and I get the privilege to speak today in a series that we're in. This is week three of Pathways. We're, we're learning and discovering all about how to hear and discover God's plan, his path for our lives. And, uh, you know, the, just the title Pathways, it makes me think about so many different things. Um, think about, you know, just like a simple path that you, you're walking along into a garden. And then I kind of rabbit trail and I think of like a road trip. Any, any road trip people in here? Yeah. Man, I love road trips. They're so fun. So many memories that happen on these trips and so many sights. And hey, it's all about the snacks, Miss Denise. You know that, right? It's all about the snacks. He, I gotta have like a, a massive pack. I wanna, wanna, it's too expensive, but beef jerky. Come on, you gotta have some beef jerky and, and some sweet and sour and just, just bring it all, right? You gotta, you gotta have the snacks. There's so many stories that happen, some, some smells that we wish wouldn't happen, but you get really close, right? You get to know people on, on these road trips. It's so fun. You know, I think about the, the life of Jesus. He was kind of always on a road trip, if you think about it. Where Jesus went, he was constantly traveling and going, sharing the gospel and his story of why he came. And it was on, on this journey where he called the disciples. And when he called them, they came. They said, Jesus said, follow me. And they came and they followed him. And as they followed, they listened. As they listened, they learned. And as they learned, as they followed Jesus, they began to see more clearly along the path how he wanted them to live, how he wanted them to follow him. And I'm thankful for scripture today. I'm thankful for, for God's word. If you're looking for truth, you need to get into God's word. It is alive, it is active. And we wanna look at some key, some key scriptures for this series. The first is Psalms 32, it says, the Lord says, I will, guide, I will guide you along the best pathway, not a pathway, but the best pathway for your life. I will advise you and watch over you. And then also Proverbs, it says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Do not depend on your own understanding. Seek his will in all you do, and he will show you which path to take. So I wanna answer the question today, which path are you on? I want us to ask ourselves, what path am I on? Is it the right path? Because honestly, I believe there's two ways to live our life. One is by sight, right? Like, like what we see around us. And the other is by faith. And, and faith, even though it can be kind of the, the harder one, it is the most rewarding. Why? Because it is God's way. So the title of the talk today, and I wanna encourage you to take notes, whether it's in the Lakeshore app or you're writing them down. I think something happens when you're typing, when you're texting, and you can go back in it and just kind of continue to, to think on it. The title of the talk today is Which Path is the Right Path? I think it's a question that we're constantly always asking ourselves, especially in this season. There's graduations happening, right? And people are, so the, the talk today is not just for those graduating, it's for every season of life, every person today. Which path is the right path? You know, every single day we're faced with making decisions, whether they're small decisions, big decisions, and every decision that we make, um, there's consequences that follow, right? They're gonna affect our lives and the lives of others around us. And in Hebrews, I love this, the Bible gives us many examples of people, men and women, of great faith is how it describes it, who did amazing things with God. Like, like there's Abel who worshiped by faith. 
there was Enoch who walked by faith. Noah, who worked by faith, even when he looked crazy, he had faith, he trusted God. And today we're gonna look at how Abraham went out by faith. He went out by faith. So let's jump into scripture, follow along. This first one right here is found in Hebrews. It says, it was by, what's this word? It was by, by faith that Abraham obeyed when God called him to leave home and go to another land that God would give him, would give him. In other words, he didn't know where he was going. God's like, just go out. I'm gonna tell you where you're going. Don't worry about it. Just go. Like, no, I don't wanna do that, right? Like, I'm gonna trust you, God, but I wanna know where I'm going. As his inheritance, it goes on, it says, he, it says, he went out without knowing where he was going, and even when he reached the land God promised him, he lived there, there it is again, by faith. For he was like a foreigner living in tents. And so did Isaac and Jacob who inherited the same promise. Abraham was confidently, I love that, confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. I love that. My dad was an architect, so when I, when I hear that, a city designed and built by God, I think about my dad. Anytime we went into a new building, he actually designed this, this building. He would go in and like we'd all run off and he immediately just stop and kind of start looking around. And I knew what he was thinking every time. He's like, I could have done this better. That's exactly what he was thinking every time. But I love scripture. There's so much that we can unpack in this that we can adopt and we can apply to our lives today. So here's what we're gonna look at. We're gonna look at three things Abraham did to bring clarity. Anybody need clarity today? To bring clarity in experiencing God's path. The first thing that he did, we're gonna go through this real quick, is that he left. He left the familiar. He left where he'd been living his whole life. Let's look at scripture. It tells us. It says, the Lord said to Abram, leave your native country, your relatives and your father's family and go to the land that I will show you. I will make you into a great nation. I will bless you and make you famous and you will be a blessing to others. I will bless those who bless you and curse those who, who treat you with contempt. It says, all the families of the earth will be blessed through you. So Abram departed as the Lord had instructed, and Lot went with him. Abraham was 75 years old when he left everybody. I love that. That tells me you're never too old to be used by God. You're never too young. You're never too old. God wants to use you in whatever season of life that you're in. God wants to give you a next step. We're a church of next steps. You're gonna hear me talk a lot about that today because every single one of us has a next step that we need to take. Now, the easy thing to do, what would it be? The easy thing would be to stay in the familiar, to stay in the comfy. But what I found in life is that typically the blessings and the miracles of God are not found in the comfort zones of our familiarity. And listen, I'm not saying that I want you to uproot and leave because we love you, we want you to stay here, okay? But what I do want you to hear is that God wants to use you today and he wants to use you in a greater way than you might ever imagine. He wants to use you right where you are, and it's the stepping out of faith and trusting God, even if I'm not used to it, God, I'm gonna trust you that paves the way for the right pathway with God. Because the truth is that God loves you too much. He loves us too much to leave us where we are. Scripture talks about this. God wants new things for us in Isaiah. It says, forget the former things. Do not dwell on the past. Oh, the good old days. Remember when we used to? Don't say that, right? Come on. God's got new things, good things for us today. See, I'm doing a new thing. Now it springs up. Do you not perceive it? I'm making a way in the wilderness and streams in the wasteland. So let me give you a little bit of background today. One of the things I love to do in scripture is you gotta have context to what's going on, right? It's easy to just read something, but when you kinda know what's going on around that, it makes it come more alive. So here we are, in, and the culture in Abraham's time was very similar to the culture of what was happening in Noah's time. Everybody was just rebelling against God. The Tower of Babel was established, and it was a civilization that was solely focused on being apart from God. So they're building the, the tower high enough. They wanted to penetrate the heavens, showing their greatness, showing their dominance, right? They had come together under one common ground, which was opposition to God. And of course, they were wrong. They were wrong. They'd sought to make a name for themselves. They were trying to build their platform, make their name great above God's. So God intervened. 
God intervened, scrambling all their language. There was confusion. They didn't know how to talk. They couldn't communicate. So Abraham's call to follow God, to leave, came in, con in context with what was happening in culture around him. See, Abraham was raised in a culture of chaos. And his own family was also involved in this idol worship. But for God to carry out his purpose and destiny in Abraham's life, God had to first extract him from the culture of chaos and everything around him. And God may wanna do the exact same thing in our lives. God had to get him out. Here we go, listen. Get him out of the unhealthy environment. God wasn't gonna show Abraham where he was taking him until Abraham was first willing to say, yes, God, I'll follow you, and then have great faith. And I think the same holds true for us. God wants us to get out of the unhealthy environments. We have to be willing to leave, to have faith, to trust him. And let me tell you, that's why, one reason I'm so thankful for this church is you hear us say a lot of times, we don't want anything from you, we want everything for you. That's not just something we say, we really mean that. Uh, Monday nights, we have this incredible class called Restore, and it's biblical foundations. It's helping us, sometimes we get off track, and you know what, I just need to get back on God's word. What do I need to know? What's the most important thing? And I wanna invite you out if you've never been. It's incredible class on Monday nights. But I think, unfortunately, many of us, we kind of approach God like this. It's like, you have this encounter with God, and you're like, okay, God, I will follow you wherever you lead me. But if you don't first mind just kind of telling me what it's gonna look like, kind of give me an idea, then I can know if it's gonna fit with my plans. Maybe kind of give me an itinerary so I can know if I wanna say yes. That's wrong, right? That's, that's not how it works. That's called sight living. But God has called us to be people of faith. Sight living isn't the same as faith living. God's not gonna show us what's gonna happen every step of the way. In fact, He's not even gonna show you where he's taking you. Instead, I truly believe this. This is important, write this down. What God wants us to do is to trust him with the next right step. Just trust him in the next step. And then as God's working, trust him in the next step. Every single one of us have steps that we need to take with God. Abraham had to leave the worldliness behind him in order to get on the right path that God had for his life. Look at scripture, I love this. In 1 John it says, do not love this world nor the things it offers you. For when you love the world, you do not have the love of the Father in you. Now, Scripture is not saying don't love God's creation. Rather, what it's saying is that God has called each of us to leave the things behind that don't glorify God. Get out of the unhealthy environments. That doesn't mean that we are supposed to cease to exist from society. No, God has given us responsibilities to carry out while we're here on this earth, to be a good influence for God, to be a God influence in the culture today. Now Abraham, he's on this new path, right? He's, he's going, doesn't know exactly where he's going, but he's trusting God. And, but God did kind of give him some motivation to go. God said by Abraham leaving that he had an inheritance for him. And similarly for all of us today, God has an inheritance for us that involves an incredible destiny. God has a purpose and a plan for every single one of our lives. But it's easy for us to get stuck, right? It's easy for us to get stuck in different areas and situations where we feel like we're being held back and we're, it's keeping us from experiencing God's path. And, and because it's hard to hear God's voice when there's all these other competing voices that are also yelling at us at the same time. It makes me think of that old game. I don't know if you ever did this as a kid. It's like, I'm gonna take some, a kid or somebody, I'm gonna put them at the back of the room, and you're like, all right, I'm gonna blindfold you, and then I'm gonna yell out instructions on how you're gonna get to me. Like, you're gonna have to take some steps forward. You're gonna step over a chair. Okay, now I want you to bow low. You're gonna go under the chair and get to me to get to where you need to get, right? Anybody do that? But little do they know is that everybody else in the room is also gonna be yelling out instructions, all these competing voices. So that person has gotta fight to hear my voice in order to get on the right path. And it's the same with our lives. We have to fight to hear God's voice. We gotta get alone with God. Jesus had to do this very thing. He had to get away to a quiet place to spend time with his heavenly father. He wanted to, he wanted to have a quiet time with his heavenly father. He had to silence all the noise, all the distractions. And for us today, we have to do the exact same thing. We have to quiet all the competing voices that are fighting 
for our focus today. Abraham, when we find him, actually when, when God comes on the scene, Abraham wasn't living like this despairing life, right? We see that he, he wasn't down on his last dime. He wasn't trying to make it. He wasn't trying to get by. He wasn't depressed. No, the Bible actually says that Abraham was, he was prosperous. His, he, he was at home where his business thrived. That's where his friends were, where his reputation had taken root. But Abraham's real journey on the right path that God called for his life happened when he heard God's voice and he responded in faith. He obeyed and he left for a greater inheritance, a greater eternal inheritance. And listen, if you really wanna experience God's pathway to be made real in our lives today, we have to decide up front. We have to pre-decide if God's path for my life is more more important than the current path that I'm currently on. Unless a person truly believes that God's destiny for them is more powerful, more potent, more, more purposeful, they're gonna be satisfied with less safe and predictable and I don't know about you, but that's not what I want for my life. I don't want that. I want what, God's, what God wants for me. I want his plan. I want his purpose. I want to be in the path that God has for my life. God didn't call me to live the safe and predictable life. He called us to partner with him, to do amazing things with him, to make a difference, to do things we never thought imaginable, but we'll never experience it unless we say yes to following him on his kingdom agenda. Secondly, in order to experience God's path for our life, we have to decide how we live. And listen, I'm not talking about a religious person's list of do's and don'ts, but rather a life of faith and following Jesus will always involve how you live, which ultimately reveals the why you live and and tells you the, the way to live, right? It's making the decision. Abraham didn't march, listen, straight into the destiny. Rather, he kind of wandered into this, this holding pattern. So he made a decision how he was gonna live. But the Bible says that he lived as a stranger in a foreign land, waiting this promise yet to be fulfilled. He was in this holding pattern for, him, for his life. I mean, he kind of made it to like the vicinity of the area, the promise, but it was not yet his. So he's waiting. And I think perhaps the greatest lesson for us to learn here is that there's maybe no discipline greater along God's path than learning the discipline of waiting well, waiting on God. And come on, can we be honest? Nobody likes to wait, right? We want what we want and we want it now. But I believe far too many people forfeit this destiny that God has for them simply because they bail out too soon. They're tired of waiting. Like I've made it to the the, the area of the victory, but they give up right before they grasp it. Or maybe they've been trusting God for a long time, trying to have faith, and they feel like they're close enough, and they're like, God, I'm gonna take the reins from here. It don't work like that, right? My, My dad used to say this. He used to say, close only counts in horseshoes and hand grenades. I never got that till I was older. I was like, what is it? What does that even mean? But it's true, close especially doesn't count when it comes to living out our purpose. Listen, I love to fly. I love to get in airplanes because I don't get to do it a whole lot. I think there's something special about it. It's, it's really cool, right? You're in this giant aluminum can flying over the water that like, it doesn't sound cool now, but there's something fun about it, right? But there's a time when going in a plane is not very fun, and that's if you come in like, like a storm ahead, like you're almost to where you're going, and you're just like, you're what? You're, you're circling. They put you in what's known as this holding pattern, which we've been talking about. And what they're doing is they're waiting for things to clear. They're waiting for the conditions to be right before you can land the plane. Like you're close, you can see it, but you're not quite there. And some, some of you feel like you're in this holding pattern today. Some of you feel like you're at the light, it's red, and you're just waiting for it to green so you can go. And, and God, I'm just I'm tired of waiting. God, what, what are you doing? But listen, waiting is hard. But this is what happened to Abraham. He made it to the land that God sent him out to. And when he arrived, he was in this holding pattern. And I love that we sang that song today. I didn't know we were gonna do it. But the truth is today that even when we're waiting, God is Working. 
He's working in the waiting. And I believe that there's two things that happen in the waiting. When we are waiting, look at this. He's preparing the promise for you, but also he's preparing you for the promise. God is working and we may not see it and we, not, we may not understand it, but we have to have faith and we have to trust that God is working. Whatever it is that you're waiting for today, God has to get us ready before we can walk into it. And he has to get you ready to handle it wisely so you don't mess it up once you receive it, whatever it is. Some people delay the promise simply because they don't learn to wait well. Abraham did this. We're talking about Abraham. God called him, but not every decision he made was perfect. He made some very bad decisions and choices, and there were constant, there's always consequences, con I can't say it, consequences for our decisions, which ended up delaying his breakthrough for some 25 years. But listen, being delayed doesn't mean you're done. You may make mistakes, you're not done. God wants to restore you, God wants to bring you back in alignment, God wants to get you back on the plan, he's still working. Abraham was still being developed in process just like us. God never wants to give us something that's gonna cause us to forget him the moment we get it. He loves us too much to do, to do that. Abraham went through trials, he went through tests, different learning seasons of his life, curves in life, and just like developing your muscles, it's gonna take work, it's not gonna be easy, it's not always gonna be enjoyable, but we're gonna encounter mountains in life that we have to go over, and valleys that we have to go through, waters that we have to like push ourselves through, to, but before all is said and done, these obstacles that we go through are designed to develop you, to prepare you for what God is doing in you. We see that even Jesus is a young boy, he grew. The Bible says, look, it says that Jesus grew in wisdom and in stature and in favor with his heavenly father and in people. If Jesus had to grow as a young boy, I think we got a lot of work to, to grow, right? A lot of work to be done in our lives. And that's why God wants us to be flexible enough on the journey, on the path, so he can continue to stretch us and grow us and do the work in us to prepare us. Otherwise, we're just gonna be stuck in this this, this rut of routine, doing the same thing, waiting for God to change things, when all along God is, is waiting for us to, to get on the right path, right? Just like a mouse on a wheel, just going in the same thing over and over. Hey, listen, it's time to get off the wheel and get on the right path with God. Lastly, in order to get on the, the right path that God has for our life, we have to decide where we look. Let me ask you, where are you looking today? Where are you looking for truth today? Because if you're looking in the world, you're never gonna find it. Where are you looking for truth today? Abraham wanted everything that God had promised him. God told him to go, to, to set up a tent yet again, and he did. Why? Because his sights were set high. Abraham was, look at this, I love, I love this verse. It says, Abraham was confidently looking forward to a city with eternal foundations, a city designed and built by God. So even when these things come and these troubles, I'm, I'm confidently still moving forward and loving and trusting and keeping my eyes set high. Look at this, this quote by Dietrich Bonhoeffer. It says, we must be what? Ready to allow ourselves to be interrupted by God. God will be constantly crossing our paths and canceling our plans because his ways are better. And remember, he wants to do a new thing in us and with us. Abraham left the world of his comfort zone and he lived in the arena of the promise, but he remained faithful to be, to be growth. He remained fluid enough for growth and development to take place in his life, for God to stretch him. And listen, the way he survived the long season of waiting was in his focus, was where he was looking, staying in the, in the state of readiness for God to move, for God to show up and interrupt some things. He chose to look at where he was going, listen, rather than where he'd been. He was looking for a city whose designer and builder was God. In short, he looked towards heaven. And this is how he kept his head on straight. He predecided, you know what? I'm for God. I'm gonna focus on God. I'm gonna keep my aim on God. I wanna stay in the right direction with God. Even when the hard times come, I've already made up my mind, I'm with God. And for all of us today, 
Listen, what happens is that if we stop looking towards heaven and the only thing we're focusing on is what's taking place around us, you're gonna miss out on God's goodness. God has good plans for us. Because listen, in earth's environments, we can't see clearly. The Bible talks about this. Look, Paul writes, he says, now we see things imperfectly, like puzzling reflections in a mirror, but then we will see everything with perfect clarity. All that I know now is impartial and incomplete, but then I will see everything completely, just as God now knows me completely. Uh, A couple months ago, I was having trouble with my eyes. I've worn glasses since I was in fifth grade and high school, got prescription lens, like contacts. And uh, a couple months ago, I, I was having a hard time seeing. I don't know what it was. Like something was just, just off. Something wasn't right. I, I don't know if it was getting old, what it is. But uh, I, was, I was in the, this is the problem, by the way, too. If, if you're like ever speaking or leading worship and you're relying on the confidence monitor and you can't read it and you don't have words memorized, that's a problem, Okay. But I was, I was in the restroom, I was getting ready, like, I'm looking in the mirror and I look in my contact case and I had to stop, I'm like, I, I wonder if I take my left contact and put it into my right eye and take my right one and put it, and boom, I could see. It was like 3D. Suddenly, there was clarity. I went to a conference that week and I was like, this is amazing. Like, I could see so good. But how easily we, we mess things up. How easily we get things off track. I made a mistake somewhere along the way, but I've noticed that the people who make the greatest difference in life, they see things differently. They have a different perspective. It's when we lose sight of heaven that our perspective gets off balance. It's when things get fuzzy in life. Your life becomes about you, what you have, what you don't have, the the, the things I'm worried about. We live life lost. This is sight living. But God has called us to live by faith. What we need today, I'm calling all of us, is to a shift in our perspective, a shift in what we're seeing to fully experience the life that God wants us to live, to see what he wants us to see. And I love this this last quote. It says, I've learned that when we learn to trust God's heart, we don't have to understand his hand because he's always faithful. That's powerful, isn't it? Because he is faithful, I don't have to worry about what he's, how he's doing it. He's faithful, so I'm just gonna trust him. I love my kids, and I want the best for my kids. And I don't know about, you may have not had a great relationship with your earthly father, but Jesus is the perfect father, and he wants the best for his kids. He wants the best for us today. And I wanna remind you, Again, I'm so thankful for scripture. You may be here, you're looking for truth today. We have to get in God's word. Because God's word is alive, it is active. It's how we start getting on the right path. It's how we get on the right path. It's according to God's word. And the Bible is full of, get this, imperfect people who made mistakes but also did amazing things with God. None of them were perfect. They all had a past. They all had flaws. But one common theme we kind of see between all of them is that they had great faith. Their lives had struggles. They had trials. They had disappointments, disturbances. They had pains. But they also knew where to look in their pain. They focused on heaven. They focused on God. They chose a kingdom perspective rather than an earthly view. And as a result, they walked with God and did amazing things with God as kingdom world changers in the midst of a world composed with sins and villains and rogues, people going their own way. They said yes to following Jesus. And Jesus did amazing things with them. I believe that where you look today determines ultimately where we end up. So again, I'm gonna ask that question. Where are you looking today? Do you like the direction of where your life is heading? Truth is we can't walk forward in life if we keep looking back. And we're not gonna be able to live out greatness one day and today 
if we're stuck staring at the past. I'd encourage all of us, just like I, I truly believe Abraham would encourage us today, to listen when God speaks. Block out the distraction, the noises. And when he speaks, act on it. Have faith, leave, get out of the unhealthy environments that are keeping you from experiencing God's fullness in your life today. I just wanna take a second. If, if you would just bow your heads and close your eyes with me. And I just want you to ask the Holy Spirit, say, Holy Spirit, what are you speaking to me today? Running after Jesus means keeping our eyes on him. He's gonna give you that spiritual sight that you need today. He's gonna reveal truth to you today. He's gonna show you the path that you need to follow today to navigate the terrain and the paths in front of us. It doesn't mean that everything's gonna be perfect always, that we're gonna always know what's gonna happen over that next hill. But one thing we know for sure is that if we keep moving forward with Jesus, if we keep taking our next right step with him, keep trusting him, then you're gonna reach this incredible destiny with God in your life today. So right now, with all heads bowed, all eyes closed in the room, I believe that God's speaking to some hearts right now. Maybe you've been questioning about your path, where, where you're going, what you're doing. And today, Christ is calling every single one of you to choose, to choose the path that he has for you today. It's a life that is filled with overflowing blessing, with God's love and peace and joy and strength. And he promised he's never gonna leave us. He's never gonna forsake us, but he's gonna be with us every step of the way. And if you're here today and you wanna take your next step with Jesus, you wanna experience the fullness that he has for your life, don't be embarrassed. Nobody's looking around. This is just a moment between you and the Lord. And you're just simply expressingly, expressing outwardly what Jesus is doing inwardly. If that's you and you wanna take your next step with Jesus today, just raise your hand and say, that's me. Just be bold. Just be confident. Amen. Come on, say, I wanna go my next level, my next step with Jesus today. And every single person in the room, let's all pray this prayer together. That way nobody's praying alone. Say, Lord, I need you. I repent of making a mess of my life. Forgive me for doing my own thing, choosing my own way. Today I choose to follow your path. I'm gonna follow your plan. Thank you for giving me your life. Today I give you my life. I confess you as my Lord and Savior. Thank you for hearing my prayer, forgiving my sin, and for filling me with your power. In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody said amen. Come on, can we praise Jesus today for those who just made that greatest decision? Thank you so much for joining us online today. If you made a decision to follow Christ, we'd love to send you a brand new Bible and a devotional guide to help you in your new journey of faith. To get these resources or to submit a prayer request, just fill out our digital communication card by texting the word Lakeshore to 94000. We'd love to celebrate what God is doing in your life and help you with your next steps. Thanks again for joining us. We hope to see you soon.